last year, and also we start to have uh, some COVID-19 uh, uh, webinars since uh, May and June and July. So I, I already know that many of your doctors already attended these uh, webinars, and also there are some uh, proposed webinars with you in the very near future, many different topics. And concerning the lessons we learned from this pandemic, I think this is one of the examples because uh, we already changed many infrastructures and uh, SOP, the flows in our hospital. For example, in the emergency department, the regular uh, waiting areas for charge and the special clinic and uh, dividing into the high risk, medium risk patient will be a regular uh, daily routine like in uh, SARS. So this is the outdoor, the front door of the emergency department. We have many announcements that if you have fever, you must wear your facial mask and you should claim your traveling history within 14 days. And also the announcement of you, you have symptoms of fever, upper respiratory tract infections, you should go to the uh, triage area rather than get into the emergency department to avoid uh, contamination and transfection of these uh, viruses to other patients. So this is the triage. Uh, we also wear uh, some outdoor, we have the outdoor waiting areas and the indoor critical and resuscitation areas. We also have the separate, the high risk patients, the medium risk patients with the low risk patients. So the, even in the waiting areas, we have some safety to avoid contamination within the hospital. The PPE for staff are also important. We ask every staff to wear the adequate PPE, uh, personal protection equipment to protect themselves. And also we also invent some new applications like a telemedicine inside the hospital, not uh, the uh, far distance. Even in the inside hospital, we want to avoid our staff to contact patient directly. We try to minimize our contact personnel. So this is a way of decreasing the duration of close contact with patient. We can see the chest x-ray and uh, make orders, um, not uh, direct contact to the patients. Here is another example that our otolaryngologists, they invent this new plastic transparent shirt for oropharyngeal swab because the doctor can sit uh, in front of the patients with a protection shirt uh, with only a small hole here and we use the swab uh, through this hole to take the samples. So and this invention has been also reported in NEJM and been by different news uh, papers uh, in Western countries. So in other words, I also have shown that before that in some Chinese company already uh, developed their, the TFDA and the European certificate a rapid test. It's it's not so expensive and all, you just take three minutes and to have a quick test for uh, COVID-19 antibodies. And also we, one company also invented the new uh, digital uh, stethoscope is electronically and we, we don't need to contact the patient um, by the doctor themselves. You just put this uh, electronic stethoscope by one nurse and or one staff, the other doctors can share all the sounds and the waves and the electronic records outside the, the isolation rooms. So I think that are, those are all important um, learning courses that we learned from uh, the COVID-19. And I think in the near future, uh, all of these uh, invention will be implicate, implement in our daily world. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yang. <laughs> Sorry, Dr. Chu. Uh, and now we are proceed to the next speaker from from uh, UKM Academic Hospital. But yeah. beforehand, we would like to inform all the participants in this webinar that this session is being recorded and will be 
uh, put online on YouTube and our Instagram in uh, of uh, UKM Academic Hospital. So and also for the question and answer session will be at the end of this session. So please do uh, write your questions uh, on chats or send us through WhatsApp or other uh, social media. So uh, for the next speaker is Dr. Agung Yudianto, uh, our one of our uh, rising star uh, student in Tuk Jakarta. Uh, he is already, even though he is young and single, he, he is now uh, our, one of our counselor in consultant in uh, digestive surgery. He will be speaking about our how academic hospital is preparing for COVID and what is the con current conditions right now. So for Dr. Agung, please. Thank you very much, Dr. Azit, for the introduction. Uh, hello, everybody. Good morning, Professor, Doctor, uh, and Good thank morning, you for the University Hospital and Fakultas Kedokteran UGM dan dari Rumah Sakit Akademik UGM serta dimanapun anda berada ya kami langsung aja sampaikan perkenalkan let me introduce that I am Dr. Agung Widianto I'm digestive surgeon and okay slide please and let me to present the interoperability ICS and hospital with regional and national head cluster to response and pandemic COVID-19 in Indonesia, Yogyakarta. Let me introduce, that's me. I'm a digital surgeon. I'm recently head of emergency department, academic hospital, Universitas of Gajah Mada, and lecture, uh, and then, no, I... Maaf, Pak Agung, bisa di slide show, Pak Agung. Yeah. Di slide show, yeah. I'm head of uh, Pandawa for logistic, UGM Hospital, and this is the government role in Indonesia when there is a pandemic COVID. That uh, our government has a health minister, education minister, that academic hospital UGM uh, below and the education and health minister. A slide. It is the organizational structure, the Ministry of Education and Culture, and then uh, University of Gajah Mada, and here, here, and Academic Hospital, Universitas Gajah Mada. Slide. And our joint collaboration here, and um, from Health Services Education Research, we have a uh, University Gajah Mada and Medical Faculty of Gajah Mada, and then we have a uh, Academic Hospital UGM and Hospital Sarjito. Slide. The five functions of management incident common system in our pandemic system now. Uh, I'm a blue one in the logistic. And then uh, the comment is from Dr. Arif of Directory, Director of Universitas of Kacamata. And then many, many uh, Department and the operational planning and finance. Slide, please. And this our ICS organizational organizational structure and element. Yeah. And then we have uh, a logistics system section and the red one, please. The logistics section provides all incident support needs. Uh, as we know, and the. Starting of pandemic in March, April, May, uh, there is no equipment for our doctor, for our nurse from government. So we get the equipment from a community. They give us 
many many equipment for us and then after one month uh, the government give us enough but for the first time the community uh they they give us everything that we need uh we will uh introduce later slide and then uh, dr arif as a director uh, she put uh, make a pandawa team a pandawa team is a team for raising donation for disaster academic hospital ugm uh, the pandawa team the name is uh, from the puppet show a Japanese traditional in Yogyakarta, Indonesia. Uh, it look like on the, our photo. There's the team of Pandawa team. Uh, maybe when we go to Taiwan, we will use the costume like this. And then this Pandawa team uh, responsible for logistic donation for academic hospital. Okay, slide. Please. And this is the organizational structure in our hospital, from director academic hospital, then it's us, me, our head of Pandawa team for raising donation for a disaster. And then we have a secretary, we have the coordinator for pharmaceutical, coordinator nutrition, food and beverage, coordinator personal protective equipment, and others. Slide. Our job is uh, our responsibility. We are provide and assure availability of uh, personal protective equipment to prevent and control infection in our hospital. And then we have to uh, give uh, a good nutrition for our doctor, our nurse, and our staff. Uh, food and beverage for our staff and the patient equipment and supplies for sanitation and medical equipment slide uh, we have uh, we store it and distribute procurement selection and the use of item then we must record and documentation from the management support organizing and managing the activities which are management for quality and quantity management of information and finance slide and then for communication and coordination uh we have a health cluster uh, and then we have we got donation we got logistic we got help from public figure from government non-government organization from community like a friend of high school friend of community motor community by community many many community then give us donation also the corporation give us a good and very a lot of donation for us slide please and then donation from community there is no need to wait for government assistance so and the first time everyone is basically blessed with a conscience conscience and sincere desire to help others who need help the people move fast support the health service they donated personal protective equipment such as hazmat suit, uh, overall suits, eh, and face mask, and mask, and 95 mask, nutrition, food, healthy drink, vitamins, etc. Right? And the funds donated by various sources have been well recorded. Ministry of Education, UKM have donated 20 billion to support our hospital service in COVID outbreak and national arm agency from government uh, is among the donors and has distributed eight tickets worth 500 million to those in need. An academic hospital has received a total uh, 274 million Indonesian. Donation from community members, community-based organization, and companies starting in March, and to hope the severely affected by the fallout of the coronavirus pandemic. And then, and this is our uh, 
logistic yeah uh, we have a cover all suite it's from donation six thousand and the mask for surgery mask we have a lot of surgery mask from donation and the masker and 95 2000 pieces and etc just like on our slide and this photo it's uh in our our storage room we have a volunteer from student of universitas gajah mada and then we have uh six volunteers and they every day they work here and we don't need pay them we only give them a suit and we give them uh, food and then they will work for us they have a kind of heart uh, for help each other and they record it they distribute and also we can distribute our logistic when we have a lot of logistic and we have we don't need logistic for us then we distribute the logistic to the hospital and the mini hospital around in our hospital slide please and this is the documentation is uh, when we receive a donation from from entire of indonesia from community from our friend then they have a uh, attention for us that they they afraid that the doctor the nurse will get a uh, covid 19 so they send us a lot of logistic for us slide and this from the buddha suci uh, donation when we build a uh, to building for COVID-19 from government and then the bed, the info stand, etc. It gives from the Buddha Suci from, from the donation. And then the picture of uh, from a hundred, uh, 500 million for hospital. Uh, it's from Pasnas, Badan Zakat Nasional. Slide. And we also get a donation from the hotel. So the hotel give us uh, like house, like hotel for our nurse, our doctor, our staff that uh, because a few of them cannot go home because the family because the community the society is afraid that uh, our staff will spread the coronavirus so they must go to somewhere to sleep to eat and then the government and then the community uh, give us the hotel for us and thank you for the community for the donation uh, hotel slide and then we recorded that after we could done that and we uh, share that on the social media and in Instagram and in Facebook and our social media so they they can read that uh, okay I I'll give a donation for hospital of UGM then it's my name okay so the the donation is uh, usual slide yeah this is okay slide yeah and this from the department uh, the, from uh, the director of hospital dr arif then uh, make a covid 19 services uh, task and then some we have uh, asked the pandawa for the logistic and this the the task from uh, uh, rumah sakit akademik okm hospital slide and we have internal communication. Communication flow will start from end user. Operational officer is department informed to Pandawa logistic coordinator to prepare to prepare the logistic. If it is not available or run out, 
Then head of Pandawa team will contact the command line outside the hospital and seek additional resources or search. Additional resources that are held outside the normal path must be documented and their quality guaranteed before being used by end users. In this case, the by coordinator of logistics under Pandawa team. And thank you for on the pharmacy uh, team in hospital Kacamata University. And thank you for the finance and thank you for the uh, publicity uh, and of uh, Rumah Sakit Academic Hospital for the uh, work together, the, the good from the management for director. So we we think uh, or we hope we can uh, reach uh, the good result for our staff and our patient and our Indonesia. Slide. Okay. Thank you, uh, everybody. Terima kasih. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Agung, for a very interesting uh, uh, presentations. And for the next sessions, without further ado, we we will give the chance to Dr. Professor Yang from the from Sinshu branch, because you have so many speakers. Then please proceed. Okay. Thank you for your introduction. I'm Dr. Yang from the uh, National Taiwan University Shinzo branch. And uh, as we know, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, it, uh, changes the world a lot. And uh, uh, it seems not well, uh, to be well controlled here now. So uh, the first case of the COVID-19 in Taiwan was identified on this January. And because uh, we had a very, very bad memory on SARS um, 16, uh, 17 years ago, so no matter the uh, central government or a local hospital, we were very, very alert about the COVID-19, the possibility of COVID-19 spread. So in our hospital, we organized a team uh, very soon specific for the COVID-19 uh, uh, for the COVID-19 and uh, the member contains the doctors, nurses, and the other medical and administration staff. And the following the general rule of the central government and also according to our hospital's uh, condition or characteristics, characteristics we uh, soon uh, uh, establish uh, various uh, uh, strategies for the prevention or management of the COVID-19. So today we are very glad to join this virtual seminars, and we have a lot of uh, topic to discuss. And I first I will introduce the first speaker, Dr. Han Yue Guo. Dr. Guo is now the chief of the Center for Infection Control at our hospital, and today she will give you, give us a talk. Uh, talking about the strategy for prevention of COVID-19 spread in hospitals. So please, Dr. Bo. Hello, everyone. This is my pleasure to have the opportunity to share the infection control policy of coronavirus in our hospital. This is today's outline, and uh, in order to control the invasion in hospital, the most important issue is to identify the suspicious case from the others. This is our criteria of suspicious of coronavirus invasion. Uh, I think every country or every region should define their own high-risk criteria by their local condition. Uh, in Taiwan, we will check everybody their travel history if they come from other countries or their contact history if they come to others come from other countries. 
if they have this contact or travel history and uh, they have some symptoms such as fever, such as upper respiratory airway infection, or loss of taste, we should consider they are suspicious case. Besides, if many people live or work together have the same symptom, this is also an important suspicious index. Uh, our hospital is a regional hospital and uh, have about 500 beds. So since the outbreak occurred, we close many in entrance from hospital and uh, keep three entrance only. Uh, at the front door, back door, and uh, the emergency department. Everybody who want to enter the hospital should be take their temperature by the infrared machine. And uh, uh, everybody in Taiwan have a health insurance card uh, to pay their medical fees. And uh, we could take their travel history from the card. So we arranged many computers to read in the card from every entrance. If people have travel history and the symptom, we will let them go to the emergency department and they do not enter the emergency department. We will keep them from the screen room and the isolation room outside of the hospital building. People who need admission will be sent to the isolation ward in our fifth floor and uh, we will keep them isolation and uh, this one. This one. Uh, people who need to admission, we will send them to the isolation room at fifth floor and uh, we will take two sets of PCR. If the two set PCR are negative, we will let them go to the ordinary world and treat them as the ordinary patient. And if their symptoms are more easy and they feel very good, uh, we can take one PCR and uh, let them go home. And they should isolate at home by themselves and uh, wait for the report. If the reports are positive, they should be admission in our isolation ward. And uh, after their symptoms become easy, no fever, we will start to check their PCR. We need two continuous set PCR negative. They our days could not be shut. The major transmission route of coronavirus is droplet and the contact. But there are many evidence about airborne transmission, especially when the patient receives the airway treatment, such as we use the steam inhalation for them or sputum suction. Uh, the, maybe they will have some small particle that spread out of the, the room and the leaf and uh, could make the airborne transmission. So how should we keep the patient to uh, stay in our hospital? Our priority is the first we first is the room with negative pressure and uh, the room with the air change air change. If the, our negative pressure room is all lived with patients. Uh, we should use the single room with independent air conditioning system, or with single room with air cleaner. Uh, at least, uh, we should keep every patient in a single room. However, if the outbreak is occur in a region, maybe we have not of that, uh, uh, enough room for every patient. So in some countries, we should use the uh, uh, big buildings and uh, keep everybody at least two meters.
uh, Taiwan CDC has suggested the personal protective equipment for every caregivers, uh, including the N95 glass mask and the surgical mask. Uh, we should use the surgical mask out of the N95 face mask because uh, when we care the patient, we will throw the surgical mask away and uh, keep the N95 glass mask for eight hours. Uh, our nurse, when they go to the world to care patient, um, they should uh, take this personal protective agreement as this picture. To screen suspicious case before admission coronavirus infection, we need a policy to prevent the further outbreak. All doctors, nurses, and the healthcare members and the patient in the nursing unit should be divided into two groups. The first group is the contact kids. People who contact with the index case within two meters and more than 15 minutes. And uh, if they have not enough equipment to protect themselves, they should be defined as the contact. Our government and ask people without N95 mask grown and graft if they don't have these three equipment to close to the index case, they should define as the contact. And uh, the others, including patients, including their families, including doctor nurse, in this nursing staff, in this nursing unit, should be defined as people at risk. Then we will arrange the PCR for coronavirus for all of the contact first. If all of the contact are checked and uh, they are negative from the coronavirus, the people at risk would keep work in the unit. However, the contact is should be isolated for 14 days. It means many doctors, many nurses should be stay at home and isolated by themselves. If any one of the country are tested as positive for coronavirus, all of the people at risk should be checked the coronavirus PCR. And if two or more people are positive, including the counties and uh, including the people at risk. If more than two people are tested positive, all of the counties and the people at risk should be isolated for 14 days. Every patient should be live in a single room and uh, every doctors, nurses, they will go home and uh, isolate it by themselves. In order to improve our safety, our hospital also have some further study projects to the hospitalized patients. Some procedures have higher risk of virus transmission. If people will receive this procedure without emergency, we should evaluate them before the procedure. People who will re receive the invasive procedure we should check their risk of coronavirus first. If they have symptoms and they have the travel history or contact history, uh, we should report to our CDC and uh, check the coronavirus by our CDC's policy. But if people have some symptoms such as upper respiratory infection or fever, but they don't have the travel history or contact history, we will check the coronavirus by, by ourselves we, because our hospital have a machine to check the PCR test. And then we will arrange the procedure till the negative result. Or if the patient is under emergency, we will take the procedure under the personal protective equipment. 
We also arranged a screen for all people they uh, admission in hospital with pneumonia. Everybody with pneumonia, we should take a check the risk of coronavirus. If they have high risk, make the criteria to our CDC, we will report as a suspicious case. And uh, if they have intermediate risk, such as they have, have um, contact with others but not met the criteria of CDC, or if they have the clinical symptom very like the viral pneumonia, or their image uh, from, out, from their CT scan uh, favor viral pneumonia, we will take the coronavirus PCR by ourselves. Okay. So this is my talk, talk about the coronavirus policy, including how to how to find a patient and uh, how to keep the patient from. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, okay, thank you, Dr. Guo. And uh, she talking about the strategy in our hospital for the COVID-19 prevention and management. And then I will introduce the next speaker, uh, Dr. Su Sen Wang. Dr. Wang is now the chief of the healthy management center in our hospital. And Today, she was talking about also the strategies. But this strategy is for the optimization of the infection control in the health checkup service. So please, Dr. Wang. OK, hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Xu Zheng Wang. And uh, I'm pleased to have this opportunity to share the strategy for optimization of infection control in our health checkup service. Uh, the outlines today are as below. And uh, in our hospital, our health information have two major services. Uh, one is for the general public. So it's a general health in the nation. And the other is for the military service because I, our hospital was a regional hospital. So we have a health in the nation for the young to do the duty of a military service. And in this year, because of COVID-19, so we have reviewed all the steps or have a health in the nation and adjust the protocols from three concepts just as below, uh, including the process re-engineering and the environment and equipment service and the staff management. And now I will show the, the, the details. Okay, first, uh, for our general uh, health examination, and uh, usually we have a risk assessment in advance before the, uh, the patients entering our hospital. And uh, we have a uh, major three steps. And in the middle, because the patients come to our hospital for health examination, usually need to make appointment first. So we will record the patient's sales number. So we will send a text message to the person about one to two weeks ago. And the text message content will inform that uh, we cannot do the service to him if he just go to other countries and go back from other country within 14 days. And the second, and in the left, we also explain to bring the national health insurance ID card on that day when they come to hospital. Because currently in our country, we can use the VPN search from the national health insurance ID card to confirm if they really go back from other country within 14 days. So we can also screen about the risk. And in the right, we will still check the body temperature when the patient comes to our hospital. And the body temperature, if the body temperature is above 17.5 degrees Celsius, we will refuse the patient to do a further examination because we worry about the possibility of a COVID-19 infection. And at the same time, we will ask them if they have any symptoms. If necessary, we will refer the patient to the screening room and isolating room 
outside the emergency room to do the further evaluations. And in order to refer the patients from our health, health management center to the screening or isolating room safely and quickly, we also do the practice and the rehearsals regularly to make sure every member in our, in our health center if need to re refer to the screening room or isolating room, we can remove them to the place more quickly and in a short way and avoid unnecessary contact to other persons in our hospital. And also, uh, everyone can see, we have uh, make posters and announcement in front of the entrance in our health management center. Let everyone know that we will check the body temperature and the uh, act their TOCC history before they enter in the center. And the TOCC history means the traveling history, occupation history, contact history, and the cluster history. We also have forms made uh, by hospitals to register every single one entering our center health management center, uh, including patients and family members. For sure, if they have any problem in the future, we can recall if they are anyone uh, enter our health management center. And to maintain uh, appropriate distance from everyone, and we we also have two methods. First, we make a seat and mark with numbers, just like one, two, three, and so on. So we will put every patient with the current uh, number to see the same seat at all times when they have uh, in our house health management center. And the second, we also make the seat separate, just like future shows. Uh, they keep anyone have an appropriate distance from others. And because of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we worry about spread more quickly. So we have a just like quick method to make a cell-made plastic port, put on the round desk. So this is also avoid the patients maybe face-to-face -face contact. Okay, and the second about the equipment. The goal we want to achieve is reducing any unnecessary contact during examination. So first, in the past, we usually use the vision checking machines, just like picture shows, to measure the patient's eyesight. And when doing this examination, the patient needs to put his forehead close to the machine and have positive contact with our nurse. And the distance between nurse and patient is only is also very short. So we changed. We used a simpler way to have a major eyesight, just use the distance visual eye chart. Because use this distance visual eye chart, and the nurse, the distance between nurse and the patient were about five meters. So you can keep the distance. And uh, about checking the blood pressure, we also cover the blood pressure monitors by plastic films. So can keep easily cleaned up and replaced. And the other, we also arrange a schedule's members. This means the same members to clean our health management center. So he can, he knows our place and can clean and disinfecting public spaces with totally. And usually he will arrange twice a day. And using the diluted bridge solution about 1000 ppm and any time if necessary. Okay, and for our staff, staff management, and uh, our team members will check the body temperature every day before working. And uh, also, if the body temperature is about 37.5 degrees Celsius, we will ask the patient to hold work first and then we'll go back for rest. And we will also report the situation online and they can do all, all further the AP evaluation. Okay. And uh, we also made forms to management to use it uh, to know our storage and uh, our current uh, pro personal protective equipment and uh, make sure that we can have enough storage 
and uh, avoiding unnecessary waste. And we also have a uh, regular education to teach the member to wear the personal protective equipment correctly. And as picture you see, uh, we also we also ask the member to wear the personal protective equipment. And in different situations, we use the different equipment. Just like the right picture shows, if uh, our patient need to do the lung function test because it has breathing and have a possible uh, air contact. So we have asked the nurse to put on the angel mask. And to avoid our members, if one member have an infection, they have a possibility to co-infect with others. So we also split our on-site staff to separate groups, about just A or B teams, and, to, and they have a separate place to avoid the course of our infection. Okay. And because our staff member also need to do a health checkup, so uh, in our health member, if we need to do the health simulation, uh, currently we simplify the process at health checkup. Uh, in the past, they will come to our health checkout center to do the, all the information. Currently, we as them can do the blood test draw the blood at their own wall to reduce the time when they stay in our health cell checkup center. And if they come to our health checkup center, we will ask them to come uh, each time for 10% and uh, about 30 minutes to complete the elimination. And usually one time we have asked just one word members come. And after this word finish the elimination, we ask the other word members come later. Okay, so above is about the health simulation for general public. And the, the, other, the other side, the other topics is about health simulation for military service. And uh, in the past, usually uh, we have uh, this young through the health checkups for military service. Usually one time we will need to check about maybe 115 to 200 percent within two hours. And uh, in the past, we usually do a examination within the hospital, so it have a small space, and we cannot keep everyone have a good appropriate distance. So in this year, we co collaborated with our uh, Xinju North District office and have a discussion about maybe if we have another place to do the military service health checkup. And in in this year, we also do the risk assessment in advance before the health checkup. And uh, during the examination, we also have uh, every person to give in the right direction to every staff in avoiding crossover, crossover uh, contact. And then in this year, uh, we, we currently we ask the uh, Xinjiang North District, North District, North Office District to borrow the community hall because it's a spacious space and that we can do the organization within the one open space. And then we also use the aeroflow markings to make the mark to keep the flow very directional and avoid the crossover contact. And in every step, in every stops, we have a the triple space compared to previously the health checkup site. And we also use the uh, partition screen to keep the privacy, but it still can keep well ventilated. So this is my presentation. And now I know that every state member has been working so hard for COVID-19. And uh, this is my pleasure here to share our strategy. Thanks to all. OK, thank you, uh, Dr. Wong. So comprehensive introduction about the strategy for the uh, healthy checkup service. And then uh, finally, we have uh, three head nurses. Uh, they will uh, share the nursing experience of fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, Ms. Pei Ting Huang, Ms. Liang Hui, uh, Hui Jin Liang, and Ms. Yong Huang Shen. Uh, head nurse of the emergency department and head nurse of the internal medicine work and the infection control center and the head of the medical 
intensive care unit and welcome uh, three of them and please. <laughs> ah, good day, uh, dear colleagues and ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. It's a great pleasure for sharing our COVID 19 fighting experience with you today. To talk today, we cover three different areas those are ED, isolation work, and ICU. Finally, we will share our nursing care guidelines for you. I would like to this this opportunity uh, for sharing COVID nineteen fighting experience in emergency department in Taiwan. I am Peking Huang, the handlers of ED. Uh, ED may be regarded as the most important of area to tackle to tackle COVID nineteen the very first July encounter. Our hospital. A 2019 bed regional kitchen hospital, as well as an advancing emergency and an initiative care hospital. There are 86 staff in our ED. During the COVID 19 crisis, we need to provide regular update information to the staff in the face of the new disease. We have regular command center and the designated uh, to make sure the update information about COVID-19 and the use live email and the poster uh, to transfer the information to everyone. We create an ED online document form Google document. They was used to disseminate patients screening, testing, treatment, PPE use and the staff health management. In the GI management, we set up a stock a stocking location and the use registration identification to information platform, training the staff to reduce the risk associated with the improper or remove of PPE equipment. However, we also create some video training program for our staff. A nurse was positioned outside the hospital and the check layer traveler history, occupation, contact history, and the cost. She was directing any patient with respiratory complaints or fever to the to to be to, to be treated in the 10 or container house. This step is for stability difference risk patient. High and low risk patient are going different way. To protect low risk patient and not be contaminated from high risk patient. We modify the fever room for X-ray operation and create a minor care area for fever case. High suspicious of COVID-19 patients will keep outside hospital. Here are my fever room and spatial content. Due to COVID-19 pandemic was we going, we upgrade the ten to container house and set up a screening bus. Finally, when the suspicious case is identified, the nurse will follow infection control procedure to transfer the case to isolation room from outside pathway to for treatment. There's a screening and a secret way into hospital. We finish our job. And next one is another handler, Hui Jing Liang. She will tell, tell us about the nursing experience of isolation work. Thank you. Uh, I'm handler of isolation work, Hui Jing Liang. Now I would like to share the experience of fighting COVID 19 of isolation work.
During COVID-19 crisis, we have seven active pressure isolation rooms, 22 single rooms, six physicians, 26 nurses, and two clean cleaners. We use color to control the, the management area and take care of one of one line without authority. We ensure the safety of staff, establish relevant standards and documents and record them, perform big testing and choose personal with N95 mask. We also conducted personal protective equipment practice and produce video teaching. For critical ill patients, we use monitors to monitor vital signs, but the data was not transmitted in time. So we added a central monitoring system into the world. Additionally, we designed a standard procedure for environmental cleaners used to resin agents to test the cleaning effectiveness and feedback to the cleaners. Based on the principle of no hand contact, the employee badge was changed to RFID bracelet then replaced many wipes and two cards for cleaning the work into disposable bleach wipes and set up a biscuit exclusive cleaning appliance in each room to reduce cost infection. A room story as a confirmed patient to have her birthday during the hospitalization because of the need to be isolated. We used the line app to celebrate her birthday. She was very touched and was discharged after one month of hospitalization. Next, we will have the, the experience of ICU. Hello, I'm the MICU head nurse from Function. I'd like to share about nursing management of COVID-19 before that environment transport from staff training, standard operation procedures, and the mental support. Because we have only one net pressure isolation work, and due to the different ICU department and the regions and its three net pressure isolation was we plan buffering digital equipment basic curtain and monitor system. Our route planning includes the control of the personnel and elevator of the route control. From ED to ICU, ICU to examining ward to ICU. For instance, for instance, from ED to ICU, we provide complaint cleaners from ED to elevator who I see is needed. For nursing staff training, research that's correct when you and take of PPE, we make the test of N94 mask and uh, correct Take it off of PPE. We require each nurse medical. This is a dimension process. From the start, the native pressure rate confirm with later function. Take off PPE step. Put an inflation trace can in buffer rate and make sure to wear PPE correctly. For environment cleansing process, we audit. Monitor module, real control, air control, and IV pump. About meeting policy, four victims, two times a day. We take temperature and wear a mask. And according to the history TOCC, and they have to wash their hands. Here is our nursing care guideline. 
such as stating net pressure, environment, care process, and so on. Many states for North could contribute if valuable to support become, become easier and more efficient. Make our with our confidence. That is like I see. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our three partners is so a uh, wonderful uh, talk about their experience about the fighting of the COVID-19. So I think it's the time for open discussion, right? So any question about uh, the above uh, talks? Okay. The question is: Can the COVID-19 virus uh, mutate to become more reactive and fierce? Uh, because the uh, Indonesia maybe is experiencing a second wave of COVID-19 as a result of the death rate. And uh, I try to answer this question. Uh, the WHO report the estimate data about the infection number and the death number since this this February till now, and uh, we can see around 13, 13 million people get infection and uh, around one million people death, and uh, we can trace back to the data at uh, just outbreak. Uh, the death rate around 5% at the first uh, in China and uh, in North America in Italy. However, we can find the death rate, death rate from the 5% to uh, become low down till now with the death rate around 3%, including America and uh, many countries you can see the death rate is around three to five percent and the, uh, the bigger countries have more people got infection we can see the death rate is around three percent so i think the the death rate is not elevated is not elevated in this recent several months and uh, from the history we, we have seen very many times of virus outbreak in this world, including influenza and uh, other virus. We can see when the virus in our human society, they will become more and more easily, tra easily transferation. The infection ability will more and more severe when they suitable when they suit, it, uh, suit our human society. However, we also see the death rate become more and more lower because if the virus, the mutant, want to become spreading more quickly, they could not make the people death because the, 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 the people death, they could not spread out virus again. So the death rate when the, when the virus become mutation, the mutations uh, in the past, uh, we can see the mutation is more and more easy spreading, but the death rate is more and more low. I think this virus um, will not be, uh, I think if we see the mutation of this virus, most of the mutation do not kill many people, but they will make the spreading more severe. And uh, another question about the asymptomatic person. Uh, as our friends ask us, uh, in Taiwan, we try to isolate the symptomatic people. But many asymptomatic people will be those uh, we cannot catch them and uh, do not isolate them. And, uh, uh, where the asymptomatic people become the source of invasion. Uh, my answer is uh, we, 
in in Taiwan, the uh, we can see many people in Taiwan without any symptom, and uh, was diagnosis is coronavirus because they go to other countries, go to China, go to America, go to Philippines, and uh, they will receive the examination there, and uh, they will they what diagnosis is coronavirus. But the our government will try to invest within investigation this patient. But we will try to find the they contact is in Taiwan. And everybody everyone was diagnosed in our other countries, we will test around uh, one hundred or or many people. Uh, who contact with them, but uh, we do not find anyone was infected by them. So this may be related, it may be to answer us. When people do not have symptoms, their transmission ability may be lower than the people with symptoms. Uh, we have 499 cases in Taiwan, and uh, some people are got Infection by others, and uh, every everyone which was got infection by others, the, the index case, all of the index case has symptoms. So maybe uh, we can say that the people with symptoms is more dangerous than people without symptoms. Uh, but uh, but the Taiwan have do something, maybe can control the asymptomatic people because we push our people to wash hands and uh, we push our people to take the safety distance. We ask our people, when you inside the room, you should keep everybody 1.5 meters and uh, outside the room, we should keep everybody at least one meter. Or we, our people should wear their mask and such like this. Uh, maybe the surgical mask is not enough for every country because uh, the surgical mask is shortage in Taiwan too. So we do not ask everybody to use this surgical mask. We can use the mask uh, with uh, uh, with other forms uh, such as for and the first subject would be wash and uh, reuse by the ordinary mask. Maybe mask and uh, social distance and uh, wash hand would prevent the people who do not have symptoms and uh, prevent them to transmission the virus. Thank you. We, uh, at, at first, only several hospitals in Taiwan could test the coronavirus by themselves. But uh, uh, our hospital buy a machine. Um, uh, our, we, we buy a machine. Uh, the machine actually is quite a dream, Q -I -A -G -E -N, And we buy one PCR machine uh, around two months ago, and uh, we can check the PCR test. Uh, if one, if I test one people from their throat in the morning around eight o'clock, we can find the answer around two o'clock afternoon. So we need everybody. The test time is around four to six hours, and uh, we can repeat the test twice per day. So people who are suspicious will be known the data less than one day. Uh, Taiwan has the rapid test uh, from the antigen, uh, and uh, some factory will produce it. Uh, however, uh, because this virus, the cost of space around three three percent. So if the PCR is available, I think PCR is. Uh, 
uh, flavor than the quick test, quick antigen test. Quick antigen test could be used as the for some place the PCR are not suitable, uh, and uh, we need the we need many people to examine the examination uh, at the same time. Uh, this is the this the quick test may be better than the PCR test. However, the PCR test has the more sensitivity and uh, specificity. Thank you. Hospital outbreak, and uh, our stand, our isolation policy is very strict. So, if one people live in the hospital and they transmit it to one nurse, many people will be staying at home in the isolation, and the many nursing staff, many doctors could not be keep their service for fourteen days. Uh, the Two example pre happened in Taiwan. Next, uh, next, these two hospitals closed their emergency department for many days because they, because about uh, twenty percent of their working staff could not be work when they found the outbreak. So I think um, if the outbreak is more and more severe and uh, many many. Outbreak at every at every hospital. This policy could not be retained. Uh, we keep this policy just because the outbreak since the outbreak happened very few in very few in this country. So we can use this high strategy policy, and uh, we have discussion with our local local health healthcare government. And uh, they will keep the support to transmit, transfer our patient, or give us some uh, care, care um, give us some nursing support uh, with other hospital at the same region. Uh, our hospital has around 500 beds, and uh, our uh, internal internal medicine beds is around 250, and uh, we supply around uh, seven units for the isolation. But when but in this uh, in this May, uh, many people with pneumonia was suspicious. We, we, we took many people as a suspicious case, and the seven room is not enough. So at that time, we closed two two was two unit and uh, clean up around thirty thirty rooms for a suspicious case. In our hospital, uh, the most of people, most the most time, um, we have around twelve patients at the same time under suspicious, and uh, at this main. And uh, till now, 
uh, runs for over two or three at the same time. And uh, we have five different cases uh, in our hospital, and uh, these five people uh, uh, stay in uh, our hospital at the same time. So we have five different cases and uh, around uh, 200 suspicious cases in these several months. Is there any other questions from the NDUH? Okay, we have no more questions. Yeah. Okay, but well, well, actually, I would like to. Uh, clarify some of the questions but unfortunately some of uh, the the person who asks is they are not uh, using any mic on their pc so they, they cannot uh, give you uh, direct questions uh, especially from uh, the questions from uh, ipu pariani from our head of uh, nursing department uh, her questions about uh, how you overcome the needs of the nurses if uh, if you face a scar resources on, 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 on the nursing staff because it's a rather a difficult problem in Indonesia because we you don't have uh, what you have in Taiwan that you uh, have uh, like uh, volunteers who working as a professional uh, volunteers but in Indonesia it's it's rather difficult. So can, can you elaborate more on, on, on this, on how uh, Sinchu Hospital is dealing with the, with the SCAR resources, especially the, the health professionals? Okay. Can I answer this question? This question is a little bit I don't know if you have a question. I don't know if you have a question. 就是在告诉大家会来的，大家可以去感受一下。呃，从18 uh, years ago, Taiwan uh, had the outbreak of SARS. After that, uh, in many uh, from, from that time till now, uh, Taiwan government went well, keep the uh, training of the staff for the infectious disease. And uh, every hospital like us, uh, we have a, a, space, a, a team, uh, including doctors and uh, nursing staff, will training for the uh, infection disease, including how to uh, wear their personal protective equipment and uh, how to care the patient, how to uh, keep their uh, work, work uh, the, the work area, and uh, we will train. The, uh, the, uh, team about the data nursing and uh, the other such as to clean the rooms, the, the people who clean the rooms also under the training. So in these 18 years, every year we have the, we have the, the training program. So at the disease occur, uh, we have uh, the every hospital have a team could operate and uh, can take the uh, suspicious and uh, pass the diagnosis patient. Uh, if under the huge outbreak, I think every country has the same problem. Uh, but uh, if uh, we, we can control the uh, uh, case under a small number, uh, Taiwan's nursing team and the doctors could, could can take the care of the ones in this, this kind of number. Thank you. Okay, uh, one more question from me to clarify. Is the license for health professionals in Taiwan attached to the person or attached to the institutions? 
because in Indonesia we uh, for for each of the physicians or nurses we can only practice in limited hospital is you if uh, do you have any uh, such uh, regulations for health professionals uh, do you get my point uh, your partner can uh, try to explain again. Yeah. Uh, in uh, I will I will repeat my my questions. Uh, in order to be able to practice in a certain hospital, uh, physicians and nurses in Indonesia, we have to have a license. Uh, yes. And the license is not only attached to the person but also it can be used only maximum for three different uh, healthcare facilities we can practice more than one uh, hospital but it's it's uh, maximum for three different hospitals so the, the license is not attached on uh, to the person but also there are maximum number of uh, places that we can practice uh, our medicine so do you have any do you have the similar uh, regulations there in Taiwan? No, in Taiwan, if we, we have the license, we can practice uh, in every uh, hospital, in every different uh, hospital. But you should to uh, uh, get the license first. And if you have the license, you can do the, uh, the, the, the same thing at the different uh, hospital. It is allowed, yes. So you can practice on more than one hospital in Taiwan? Yes. Uh, our license will be just registration in one hospital. But if you want to work in another hospital, you can apply to the government and they will let you uh, to supply a funding hospital at a, at a some uh, apply time such as maybe Wednesday morning or Friday afternoon, you can go to other hospital to do the medical affairs uh, if you can, if you apply first. Okay. And, uh, the infectious men in Taiwan uh, uh, become more and more since the SARS outbreak. Uh, before the SARS outbreak, many hospitals do not have infectious men in hospital. But after the outbreak, our government has, has every 300 beds need one infectious man. So uh, many hospitals, uh, more than 300 beds have uh, his own infectious start and uh, could be uh, to set the policy of infection control in this outbreak. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you for the explanations. Dr. Arif, do you want to add something? Thank you, sir. Uh, I just want to clarify our question about the, uh, that in Indonesia, many patients, uh, uh, no, uh, many confirmed cases are asymptomatic, yeah, including uh, we have the case for example, the symptoms the, at the hospital is uh, like a heart uh, disease. And then later, uh, confirm become COVID. So uh, I want to clarify uh, what what is the, the prevention, uh, what, what should be anticipated in the cases. For example, do you do the... Uh, routine screening for, for the patient to the hospital or to the special treatment like uh, operation or uh, deliver in your hospital? Uh, I try to answer the question. Uh, I, I think every country need their policy because every country has a different situation. In Taiwan, uh, our policy is try to block the disease out of the country. So everybody who go to go into the com this country should be isolated for 14 days and make their disease 
sustainability is low and they could go outside. Uh, however, maybe some countries have many uh, community invasion and uh, they could not uh, define cases from the general history or from a contact issue because everybody maybe has a risk. Uh, in this condition, maybe we should try to keep the, the patient and the nursing staff have a, a safety distance. Maybe such as maybe we, we need to, when we care the people who get upper airway infection or uh, people who have fever or who have pneumonia, we should do more strictly with the hand washing and the mask. And uh, uh, maybe the surgical mask could not prevent all of the because some medical procedure will make the infection become airborne. But uh, uh, the surgical mask is better than nothing. And, uh, and, uh, we, and the surgical mask could uh, to let the virus become less and uh, let the infection possibility is low. And when we do something um, have higher risk, such as skin inhalation or others, maybe we should to apply our care scape, give a more equipment, or maybe sometimes we should to try to use other ways, such as the powder in, to switch to the inhalation. Maybe we should to change our uh, care, care policy because we, we should not to do something to harm for our, our, our medical teams. So I think maybe we should to separate our patients to two groups. One group is a symptom, maybe a fever or invasion or pneumonia. Others maybe have no symptom around this. And uh, we care the people who have this symptom, uh, even they do not have travel history, even they do not contact history, we should do more, we should, we should, we should wash hands or do something more, more carefully, uh, not only to care the patient and also to, to prevent us to get infection. One, one small question, Dr. Rajit. So do you uh, routine, routinely uh, perform the screening for the hospital staff and how often? Okay. Uh, the, so we have two policies. Uh, first one is if our staff who get fever, get the upper airway infection or got pneumonia, we will check their PCR. And uh, till now around 20, our members are checked and all are negative. Besides, we have another problem. We have to take blood draw to a serology test. And uh, we have um, to uh, test around 80 members who have contact with the definite case or who care the suspicious case. Uh, they are 18 doctors and the nurse uh, take the blood draw for a serology test and the all are negative. So we don't have any doctors or nurses are getting patients here now. Ah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay, if there's no other questions, then we we can uh, close this uh, seminar. But as I remember from Shinshu branch, you would like to uh, close the sessions by Prof. Uh, Professor. Okay, yeah. thank you. It's time. Uh, yeah. yeah, we are very happy to join this uh, e Congress. And actually, we learn a lot, and we think it's a good uh, uh, opportunity to cooperate with each other. Uh, although uh, in this uh, pandemic, uh, since the COVID-19 pandemic, so we just can uh, 
discuss with the uh, via the, the online discussion. So next time maybe we have a chance to face to face to discuss. I think we can learn a lot more. Yeah, thank you. I'm very happy to join this yeah. uh, seminar today. Thank you, Prof. Chang, Prof. Yang. See you next time. Thank you, Prof. Yang. Thank you very much, Prof. Yang. And Prof. Wu, Prof. Wang, and Inersis. Thank you very much. Okay. Terima kasih, Bu Mei. Ya, terima kasih. Ya. Semangat, Pak. Sukses ya, Pak Agung. <laughs> Pak uh, Asih. Pendowonya, pendowonya. Pendowo lima. Pendowo enggak yeah. ada yang enggak lima ya. <laughs> okay. Terima kasih. Mungkin ke depan lebih kita rancang waktunya ya, biar lebih banyak yang ikut. Iya. Yeah. Oh,